we are like, like a house. And we have invited God to come live in our house, but sometimes we have a closet or two that we need him to go in and help clean out. Just a joke, kind of. But really, open up and let God just pledge your heart for what he has to do, because you'll never be disappointed. Amen? Well, good morning to you. You got your Bibles? You ready to get into this? a thing called reigning in life in Christ. That's what we're doing. How many here are in Jesus? How many know that Jesus is still Lord? He hasn't been kicked off the throne. He hasn't lost any battles. He hasn't forgotten about you. And if we are in Christ, then that's where we begin our day. We begin our day in Christ in what he's finished his work for us. Amen. So, just want to share with you, and, and I'm just so excited to see your faces, so many people today, and I just, I just believe in the best for you. I just want to share, how many here know that this world, after Adam and Eve sinned, became a prison? And see, what a lot of Christians don't know is that the earth is a prison, and the only way to get off the planet is you have to have Jesus in your heart. And see, that's why Satan has sold religion. Religion gets us distracted. But the truth is, we need to have each of us Jesus in our heart. That's the ticket out of here. Whether you die and go home to be with the Lord, or whether we just get raptured and caught up when he comes, we're going to leave this planet. But did you know Satan is imprisoned here? The other thing I want to share with you is, as we walk with the Lord, he said, the Lord is my shepherd, you shall not want. Amen. But we've got to turn our life totally over to him, meet with him, and let him line out our marching orders. His way with our life is much better than our own way with our life. Can you say amen? And not knowing what to do sometimes is just enough to get us frustrated. Listen, God has better plans for you. Can you say amen? But we need to walk with him. So today I'm going to be sharing on this teaching, praying in the spirit. The gift and the tool of praying in the Spirit, what it involves, what it covers, how important it is, and why Satan fights it so hard. How many here know that when you were born in the earth, God knew you before you physically came alive in the earth? He said, before you were born, I knew you. Amen. Amen. I purposed for you to be before me in love. And then our parents got together and they created the body. But our spirit and soul come from God. Can you say amen? And then when we come down into the earth, into an embryo, and we are born into this planet, hi, everybody, God gives us our first breath. I think God's a prime example of loving us so much to give his only begotten son. Correct? Amen. So let's get into this. Praying in the spirit. So in this morning, in this lesson, as they get our, our lesson up there, our, our notes up there, we want to bless you today. God has given us all kinds of gifts. And if you read Luke 19 and Matthew, I think somewhere it's either in 20 or 18, 20 or something, it talks about gifts, that each one is given a gift and a talent. Can you say amen? 
And as we've been given gifts and talent, our job is to work with Jesus with them and produce more gifts and talents. Amen. If you can play the guitar, don't play it just for yourself. Play it into the Lord and play it for others. If you're a good, strong worker and you like to have business and you do things, just don't work for yourself. Work for the Lord and work for others. Benefit the other lives. Amen. Because as we sow, so shall we. I like to be a good sower. Amen. But first of all, if you're going to sow seed, you've got to take it out of the bag. Put it in the ground. Amen. If you're, going to pro- if you're going to prosper in any degree, you've got to take your finances out of your control and put it in God's control. Can you say amen? And then, tell, then just simply obey what he'd have you to give. That's all. Obey what he'd have you to give. And you say, well, I don't have a whole lot to give. See, there you get thinking. How do you know the dog won't show up on your front porch with a sack in its mouth? Some drug dealer threw his money out because he's paranoid, and they brought it to you. You say, oh, Pastor Ken, that's ridiculous, hey? Right? When God said to Peter, Peter, out of the first fish you catch, take the gold coin. Remember, we serve a very supernatural God. I would like to say, and don't, get, don't throw me out, but people are so caught up with words. Everyone say paranormal, okay? Paranormal means not normal, all right? Paranormal. Normal is not normal. Now, what's the other name for that? Well, it's not important. Okay, there's two kingdoms in the earth, both functioning. God's kingdom, listen to me carefully because you'll understand more. And then the enemy's kingdom. The enemy kingdom is aggressive and pushy and deceptive. How many got that? It's a whole system called the mystery of iniquity. God's kingdom, we know it's just that. It's the kingdom of heaven, and Jesus is Lord of that. Can you say amen? But in order for us to accept and get all the benefits of the kingdom, we have to accept Jesus Christ into our heart. Then the Holy Spirit opens the door. He's the doorkeeper and allows his entrance to learn all that God has for us. Can you say amen? And so when we're going to be learning is one of the gifts is speaking in tongues. We're going to talk about that. And I have to set the stage. So as I do, there's two sections of speaking in tongues. Everyone say two. There is the public use of tongues, interpretation. And there is the private use of your own private prayer language. Say amen. Now, your own private prayer language is what we're talking about today. And we're talking about how important it is. So let me just say to this to you. Before you were born, God gave you a spiritual language. Before you were born, God gave you a mental language. And when you were born, God gave you a physical language. But the problem is, we were born in sin because of Adam, so the spiritual language that we have lasted only until we became subject to sin and separated from God. It's called the age of accountability. Say, I got it. And then the language shuts down. Now, here's the fallacy. Now, you've probably not heard it this way, but this is the accurate way. How many know that when you get spirit-filled, which I did, God doesn't give you an extra spirit-filled gift. He lights up the gift that you already have. You see, when you get born again, he makes you a new creature, but he makes you into the creature he wants you to be and not the one you, you ended up becoming. You see, he has a plan for all of us. It's beautiful. It's perfect. And every time you get close to it, you get all the benefits. You feel all that goodness, but it seems to fleet away. We can only have that every day when we walk with Jesus. And so we need to learn about this particular gift called speaking in tongues. Because this gift was given to us to talk directly to God, bypassing your own understanding and Satan's ability to hear and understand. 
And remember what Jesus said in John 3. He said, the person that's born again will be like the wind. You can hear the wind blow and come here and go there, but no one can tell where it's coming or where it's going. That's the enemy when he looks at your life. When we learn to be spirit-led, spirit-taught, spirit-walking, you'll learn in such a way that the power of God will move you aloof from the enemy's control of your life. Now, folks, whether you know it or not, Satan's been trying to control our life all ever since we were kids. But how many know we broke loose? We have Jesus. But how many people out there are still under the enemy's control because they don't understand the difference between their spirit, their thinking, and their physical body? So we're going to teach you about this little gift. Say amen. Let's turn and read our scripture if we can. Isaiah 28, 11, and 12. And it says, With stammering lips and another tongue will he talk to his people. Yet with a little precept and a little giving of teaching, yet these people would shut their ears and they would not hear. This is a prophecy that God wants to speak to us in his language, in his power, in his kingdom. But the Israelites shut their ears and they would not hear. And so we know this story. They rejected God, and so Jesus went to the Gentiles. Can you say amen? You'll find that in Romans, too. It says, because the Israelites rejected God at that time, God turned from the house of Israel to the seashore people and started teaching the Gentiles. You'll find that in Matthew 13, verse 1. All right, you still with me? Stammering lips in another tongue will he speak unto his people, yet they would not hear. Now, Mark chapter 16, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Good news is gospel. It's good news. Not that the world and judgment's coming on the United States. Well, we know that. But get people saved. The gospel to every creature. Who do we to preach to? Every creature. You got some dogs? Practice on them. Got some cats? Practice on them. Hey, Diana. <laughs> he who believes and is baptized. This is talking about being born again. Remember, the first baptism is accepting Jesus in your heart. Second is water. Third is baptism in the Holy Ghost. He who believes and is baptized into Christ will be saved. But he who does not believe will be what? Yeah. See, the world's already condemned, but you are not. And these signs will follow those that believe. In my name, they shall what? Listen, if you're not casting out demons, then maybe, maybe you ought to, because your neighbor's got a few. And they will speak with what? Okay, we'll stop right there. Jesus said, we shall speak with? Come on, Jesus said, we shall speak with? Well, I don't want to speak with new tongues. Well, you don't have to. You don't have to. It's not a, not a mandatory thing. It's a gift that God gave you that if you're wise enough to use it, it will change you immensely. Amen. We're going to go through that, and we're going to show you. So if Jesus said, you shall speak with tongues, what should we be doing? Okay, so don't let anybody tell you it passed away, or tongues are not for today. All it is is confusion. Who do you suppose might be saying those things? Of course, because he doesn't want us to use this gift. He doesn't want us to understand its beauty, its purpose, and that God himself speaks in his own language. Now what's exciting is over there in 1 Corinthians 13, we call this the love chapter. The first verse says, Though I speak with tongues of men and angels and have not charity or love, I am nothing. So here it is again that our tongues can be of men and angels. Hello, I happen to have five different angelic and human languages that I am not aware of that are called speaking in tongues. They change on the severity of the pressures of life. If I'm around witchcraft, it sounds different in my tongues. If I'm around a lot of God's people, then I kind of have a different tongue. And if you have more than one language where it seems to alter, that's normal. Remember, this is a spiritual language that you're not supposed to understand. 
It's supposed to go right directly to God and cover every base and every direction in a matter of moments. Where us physically and mentally when we pray are limited by our understanding. But in the spirit, how be it we speak mysteries. On purpose, God did it that way so that the enemy could not read your laundry, could not get into your grocery list. Can you say amen? So do we pray with our understanding? Yes. Do we pray in the spirit? Yes. Do we sing with our understanding? Yes. Do we sing in the spirit? Yes. We're going to look at those scriptures. I'm even going to show you how to get it. You can get it at home. My mom got it in her sleep. God had to get her flesh out of the way. If you knew my mom, you would smile at that. Hello? Because she knew it all, all the time. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. She didn't know. She had a religious thought. And we all are religious in one way or another. And you can tell how religious we are when somebody tells you something that you probably could use to know, but you don't want to know, and you're sorry they told you. Moving right on. <laughs> all right. We're going to cover these four areas. Number one, God's releasing our spiritual tongue. God releasing our spiritual tongue, okay? Remember, that's what happens. You have the tongue, but it needs to be released. Now, if you have your tongues released, use them all the time if you can. Don't, remember, they're speaking not unto man, but unto God. So don't go right up to Becky and go, hey, Becky, shut the up. What do you think about that? <laughs> I'm doing it with Becky because she understands. Do you understand? Don't be running down the store speaking loud in tongues. Use some wisdom. Can you say amen? Tongues, these tongues are for your prayer and private prayer language. Remember two weeks ago I talked about Peter? Remember the lady with the purple? And she had died. And he knelt down and he prayed. Remember? And then he turned to her and spoke. See, when he knelt down and prayed, he was speaking in tongues. He was generating power in him. And he's getting the power up so he can release it with his mouth. Hello? Did you ever hear Jesus say, say to this mountain, speak to this problem? So, you see, when we pray in our language, be, uh, now, let's just, let's just understand something. When you pray in tongues, it generates in you. It's a generator alternator. And it fills your wine bag with God. It's literally a fan. Now, if you know anything about fire, you can take a fan and put it, aim it at the fire, and it'll make the fire hotter and bellow it, everything like that. And you'll see that some of these out in the fields where they're burning logs and stuff. They have big fans blowing on them so they continually consume. Your tongues, your praying in tongues is your fan to keep the fire of God burning in your spirit. And he shall fill you with the Holy Spirit and fire. What's the fire for? To get rid of the junk in your life, burning it up within. Hello? The Holy Spirit's burning in you. God's burning in you. But if we won't let him pass our thinking, he won't clean us up too good because we'll always block him. He'll come right up to here. And then, our, our, oh, maybe, God, you're trying to tell me something. <laughs> yeah. Are you with me? All right, so let's get into this. Second of all, speaking in tongues generates God's power. Thirdly, our prayer language is crucial for a believer. And then fourthly, this language generates power to help us. How many here needs help? If you, your hand's not raised, then you really got a clue, haven't you? You totally need help every day. Now, I know you got it together. We all, you know, that's what we're doing. We're learning to get things together. You've got things that are working for you. But God put them there. God showed you those. Those things are working for you. Now, there are other things that are not. So this is where God's wisdom and your praying in tongues brings the wisdom of God into that area. The Bible says, whatsoever is born of God. Listen to my words. This is in John. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. It doesn't say whosoever, it says whatsoever. 
And what he's saying there is, whatever you birth in the spirit in prayer comes from God and will overcome. So if God gave you a certain ministry, if he truly gave you that, and you birth it in prayer, and you keep praying in tongues, keep pursuing God, he will all that rise up in you, and that ministry will overcome. Can you say amen? The problem is you can't get very many Christians going to the right kind of church to get the training that they need. So now they're going to Bible colleges, and there's some really good ones, Rhema, Charisma. There's some wonderful studies that teach Take the lay person like you and I and turn us into an effective minister. You don't need to be going to Bible college and learning the theology of the expression of man's anatomy. No, you need to be going in and finding out what Jesus wants you to, to know. And that's what church is really supposed to be. This is supposed to be, in every church, is supposed to be a training center to teach you how to live before God and how to get others to live before God because your life is very good. Turn around to somebody and say, I'm totally blessed. So, all right, so let's look at it. For number one, God's releasing our spiritual language. You guys know some of these scriptures. Go with me to Acts chapter 1, 8. I bet you most of you can quote it. Acts 1, verse 8. Okay, Jesus is speaking, and he says in verse 8, Acts 1, but you shall receive power. That's the Greek word dunamis. Miracle exploding power. That's what dunamis means. It's where we get dynamite. This power is dynamite if you use it properly. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Notice it didn't say fill you. It says Come upon you. Every word in the Bible is accurate and tells us something. God says, I'm going to put holy clothing on you. Not only do you have me in your heart, boys, but you're going to go to Jerusalem. You're going to get clothed by God. And what is that clothing going to do? How many here remember the story of Elijah and Elisha? Elisha was the understudy of Elijah. And Elisha got twice as much of his teacher, Elijah. But there was some very important things. Number one, if you're going to be a good Christian, Elisha followed Elijah everywhere, followed, learned, watched, really got with the program. And he said, wherever you go, Elisha, when you leave, I'm going to see it. When you're going to bless me. And they said, we all know the story. When Elisha was taken up, Elisha said, where is the God of Elijah? And he threw down his mantle, correct? He picked up, his, took off his clothing and put on God's anointed man's clothing, the mantle of the Lord. Isn't that what you and I did? We took off our old man. We come and receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And we receive the mantle of the Holy Spirit. And now when we strike the waters, now when we speak the word, it has an anointing on it. Can you say amen? You see, the mantle came from Elisha down upon Elisha from heaven, didn't it? Where'd the Holy Spirit come from? It's the mantle of the Lord. Now your job is to pick it up, take off your old self, and put on the new self, and learn to wear his clothing. Say amen. That's what you have. That's who you are. Glory to God. It's wonderful. But you've got to learn to walk in it. Say amen. And we all are learning. So we have power. Say I have power. Now let's see the fulfillment of that in Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 4. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus, 40 days after his ascension, they were all in one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Now, folks, this is the first time the Holy Spirit filled the earth like never before. That's why the rushing wind and the fire and everything. Not everybody that gets spirit filled is going to have a rushing wind. Hello, you will get fire and you will feel wind, but you're not going to get like this. This is God filling the entire earth. 
with his power. Funny thing about Christians, the only way you can access the power of God, Tina, is through the name of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit's in all the atmosphere you breathe. He's completely there. His power is omnipresent. See, it says where Jesus was when he preached that the presence of God was there to heal everyone, but only a few people received it because their heads were somewhere else. Do you know how many people come to church and don't get things? Because they don't prepare themselves to receive. And the day of Pentecost probably come, they were one accord, one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven, a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. And one sat on each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to what? Speak in other tongues. Now, do you think they knew what they were saying? No. And if you read on, it's so beautiful. Here they're speaking, and they're just getting filled with the Spirit. Fire is dancing. All, and they're in a sort of an upper room that's kind of like one level above the alleyway. And all these people, remember, this is Jerusalem. All these people are there for everything. And they hear these fishermen who are pretty basic talking in all of these languages, Mar Marthians and Scythians and, and all these different languages, the wonderful manifestations of God's word. You would think that was a sign? So, how many here have Jesus on the inside of you? So you have your language. It's already in there. But it has to come out your mouth. Why, Pastor Kerry? Because the movement of your mouth establishes God's covenant. You believed in your heart, confessed Jesus, and you became saved. You believe in your heart, and then you speak your languages, and the Holy Spirit takes those words, those utterances, and formulates and meets every need of that, everyone that you know in that entire day, including you. And you can do that in a half an hour would take you three days in English. So the use of your tongues is so important, but it's a private use between you and God to cut Satan out and cut your limitations out so that you can cover everything God needs for you to cover. How many here know that that's a good deal? If you let God work into you, help you pray, he will cover things you don't know what to say. Hey, I'm a poet. Hello. And then when I got, let me just tell you, Sometimes people get filled and, and get saved in stages. They'll get born again. Then later on, they'll get spirit-filled. Then maybe they'll get baptized in water. Sometimes they'll get saved, and then they'll go get baptized in water, and then they'll get spirit-filled. With me, I got born again and spoke in tongues, just like that. You know, that kind of blew some people's doctrine, because they believe you get saved, and then later on, get your tongues. No, no. You have your tongues before you're saved. Because God put them in you before you were born physically. And this is where we lose it. We don't get into the word. We just assume it's handed down information. No, God knew you. God purposed everything for you. Now let's live his life out for us and not live our own life separate from him. Use your tongues as often as you can. And if you're not... Speaking in tongues, and if today you want to, I'll pray with you, you'll get your language, okay? It's no big deal, but just release it and get it going. But you will be so happy because it'd be like somebody plugs you into a, a, a huge charge because your language does not stop for your physical, mental. It actually gangs up on your physical, mental weaknesses and heals them. So the more you pray in tongues, the healthier you'll be. I said, the more you pray in tongues, the healthier you'll be because it's God praying through you and knows how to cover everything for you. But the devil says, it sounds weird. Don't pray it. Your mind is jealous. I can't control that. I, I don't know what you're saying. Have you ever felt your mind be jealous about things? Sure. 
Sure, maybe you're okay, but then somebody else got the job that you didn't get and you were believing for, and now you're jealous and don't know why you're jealous. See, it comes out of the mind. Your spirit never gets jealous. Got God in it. Say amen. So a couple of points I want to give you. All right. Church, everything God gives to us is important. He doesn't waste a word. He doesn't tell us things that are just we can come see, come saw. Two, on the day of Pentecost, God's spirit came into the entire earth. The reason why sinners don't have Jesus or accept Jesus is they're not listening to the Holy Spirit trying to get them to a place of accepting him. Did you know the Holy Spirit was sent to lead every human being to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ? And you see, the enemy's got a lot of people's attention looking other places, looking at other things. Instead of us getting angry and faulting them, let's pray for them that God get a hold of their attention and get their eyes where they need to be so he can work with them to save their lives. Can you say amen? So you praying and, and interceding in tongues for your family and for your loved ones, for your businesses, is probably one of the most important ways to pray for your family and your business. Can you say amen? It covers everything. So let's look at this. Thirdly, they begin to speak with tongues. Folks, when you get filled with the Spirit, you have to, by faith, begin to speak. Now watch. I'm, I believe I receive, okay? Okay. What's wrong? I'm not speaking, am I? So a person that believes they're going to receive the Holy Spirit, say, Father, I want you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. Release my language. Then you have to, by faith, speak in faith. Say hallelujah. And usually I'll lead people. Say hallelujah. And they'll say hallelujah. And I'll say hallelujah. And they'll try to follow. And they say, that's it. Now keep speaking. Just got to pop that little cork right here in your mouth. Once it pops out, let the Spirit flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. It's been bottled up in there for quite some time. Let it flow out. How often, Pastor Terry, should we be speaking in tongues? 80% of the time of your prayers. So if you don't have your tongues manifested yet, you're missing out on 80% of the most positive prayer you could ever pray. Now, who would be behind you not knowing that? That's right. So you want to be spirit-filled, even if your mind tells you it's nonsense. Of course it does. Your mind has garbage in it. Your mind is jealous. It's not in control anymore. Am I making any sense to you? So you pray. You believe you receive it. You already have the Holy Spirit in you. Then he floats up. He meets you right about here. Then the Holy Spirit comes down, and you're praying Oh, Lord, I, I believe, I receive, I ask the Lord for the bat, baptism of the Holy Spirit, and God says, speak. And it just spit a cup of hot, and it just comes right on out. Now, I'm showing you and talking to you about it so you can get it in your own shower, or your own room. You don't have to necessarily come up here and get it, okay? But you can just receive it. It's the same as receiving Jesus. How hard was it for you to receive Jesus? You said, Lord, forgive me my sin. Come into my heart. Lord, fill me with your spirit. You want me to have my language? Release it. And then by faith, step out and start speaking. Start babbling your way to heaven. Hello. Amen. By interpretation, don't be sitting there in yourself thinking that you're so smart. Reach out to me. I'll take you. That's what I said in tongues right there. See, I have a wonderful interpreter. His name is God inside of me. I can sing in tongues and God will give me the words. And I can sing in the spirit and he give me the tongues. You, the more you walk with God, the more it all becomes one flow, one rhythm in God. Is this encouraging you? Amen. So don't, you know, you might have heard, oh, that's all of the devil. It passed away. Show me one scripture where it says that. You can't. That's all Satan and his religion. Let me just share this with you. Religion is man's desire to reach God by their own works and effort. Religion is a rep repetition of ceremony without their heart being involved. Man's religion does not please God. Man always falls short 
by offering God our stuff. God says, remember Cain and Abel. Abel brought his own stuff. Abel did it according to God. Don't bring your own stuff before the Lord. Do it according to God. And speaking in tongues is what he wants you to do. To help your life go all the way through. Can you say amen? All right. So my second point is speaking in tongues generates God's power. How many here have an alternator in your car or truck? What does it do? It keeps everything running. And not only that, but you can disconnect it from your battery with your car running, and the car will continue to run. Now, if you have a generator, you take it off the battery, it'll stop. Because all it does is generate what's in the battery, but an alternator produces power. You have an alternator in you. His name is Jesus. And he has his own tongues. Remember the first scripture that we didn't see up here? With stammering lips and another tongue, will he speak to his people? Are you his people? Are you going to shut off your ears like the Israelites did? And yet they wouldn't hear? I hope not. You should be praying in tongues every day. Every day. Just say, Lord, excite me and ignite my tongues so I can pray them. And pray them under breath, driving to work. You leave your mother, get this one around when you're shopping. Every time you can. Because you can speak that. And when you're doing that, you don't have to come up with what to pray for. It already knows because it's the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? So you got, you got a situation with your, your parents or something, and you don't know how to really reach them? Father, in Jesus' name, watch. Father, in Jesus' name, I place my mom in your hands. Lord, you know some of your moms are gone, so, but not all of them. Or I place my brother in your hands. Father, and you call out his name. Father, I place John Doe in your hands and take my language, Father. And now, as I pray in my language, my tongues, take the words and the utterances and meet every need on my brother's life. Then you start. Father, in Jesus' name, and you'll feel it going. And suddenly, you just feel like you just, it's done. It's kind of like God says, that's enough. That's all I need. Remember, God needs us to invite him in. This is man's planet. God won't even come in here if we don't invite him. How about your house? God come into our house without inviting him? No, sirree. He never trespasses. Satan knows this. That's why he gets you to feel embarrassed and you don't want to speak in tongues and you don't want to do all that. Listen, you're in the way. You need to do everything God asks you to do. You need to be more faithful at church. You need to get your life together so that God puts it all together for you. And if listen, if you're on the operating table, you're under anesthesia. Can you say amen? You're not about to leap off the operating table. But listen, your anesthesia as you're praying in tongues will literally numb you to what's happening the devil's doing and make you so in tune with God in a matter of moments. You want to miss out on that? Use your tongues. You don't know how? Just start in faith. Oh, you might just get oh, ball, 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 oh, ball. Don't stop there. Your head's now involved. Why am I saying that? Why am I saying? Shut the head off and keep talking. God will turn it into a beautiful language. You see, it's us interjecting our own interruptions that stop God because he's a gentleman. Your will will surpass God's will every time if you get in the way. That's why you die to self daily. You get out of the way so God can fix you quickly. We don't have much time left. Are you with me? 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 1 and 2. That's our scripture for the second point. Speaking in tongues generates God's power. Here it says in verse 1, pursue love, desire spiritual gifts, and especially that you may prophesy. That's speak what I'm doing. 
Prophesying is speaking the word from your lips in an understandable language. But speaking in tongues is speaking the word in an ununderstandable language. So we'll see it here. Watch. And it says, he, and it says for he that speaks in a in tongue does not speak unto who? Men. It's directly for God. But unto God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks what? It's the Greek word there for mystery. They didn't have a, 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 something to change it into. So they just brought it over. It's called a transliteration. So mystery means hidden secrets revealed to a certain group. That's all that word means. So what group does God have, hide his secrets from? He hides them from the devil's bunch. For had they would have known, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. But he hides them for us and him so we can operate in the realm of the spirit. Can you say amen? Spirit to spirit. We are spiritual creatures. We walk in a spiritual kingdom. We're under spiritual principles and spiritual rules. Now, if you want to stop all of that, just get into what you're doing, and all of that will stop for a moment until you get done with what you're doing, and then God says, are you done? Yeah. All right, let's keep going again. Let's try not to stop our growth as much as we can. Say amen. Notice we speak mysteries. They're a mystery to us until God reveals them. 1 Corinthians chapter, on the same point, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, look at verse 16. Paul says this, I thank God I speak with tongues more than you all. This is Paul the apostle, wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. And he says, I speak in tongues all the time. Can you say amen? So it must be cool. Of course it is. Go with me to Acts 10, verse 44 through 46, also there in your notes. <clears throat> is this blessing you? We haven't even got to the meat yet. All right. Acts 10, 44. And while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit, what? Fell upon all those who heard the word. No wonder Jesus said to Martha, look at what Mary's doing. She's sitting at my feet hearing the word. You know what's wrong with a lot of Christians? Is they're stuck in their problems and they're not hearing the word. The word has the answers. If you go to some of these churches, you're not getting the word. You're getting psychology. And they don't tell you how to overcome. You have to find somebody in those big churches that might know something. To tell you how to overcome. Go to a training center in church where you're going to learn this stuff. Not send this tape to them. Can you say amen? Look what it says. And if those heard the word, and those of the circumcision, talking about the Jews, who believed, were astonished as many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they heard them what? Speak with tongues and magnify God. Now, see, the Jewish people thought Gentiles were dogs. And here's Peter, chief apostle of the, of the Jews. He's the apostle over Jerusalem. He's preaching, and Gentile people get filled, get Jesus in their hearts, start speaking in tongues. That blow religious people's mind, huh? But does God want to speak it in tongues? Yes. Does God want you speaking in tongues? Yes. Does God give you that gift for a reason? Yes. Are you going to use it? Yes. I was up to you. But listen, you'll always, from this point on, if you're not using it, will feel bad because you could be having something that God really wants you to have. And remember, you have the language, but to release it, you have to be in faith about that. What's the smallest member, James says in your Bible, it says your tongue. And what is full of undeadly, unruly poison? Your tongue. 
What has two fountains in it? You, a bitter fountain, your flesh, a sweet fountain, your spirit. Speak from tongues out of your spirit, and you will bless everybody with honey. Honey in the rock, man on the ground. Jesus, everywhere I am found. Amen? Why? Our focus is on the God part. We might live in a trash can, but we're not of the trash can. Can you say amen? And each one of you got your own little spot where you dwell in your house, in your land, and it's sanctified. It's got God there. Amen. That's your sanctuary. That's your place. Now let's take over more property. Let's take over more people and get them born again. How about your family? Are they all together? Of course not. Neither are mine. But they're all coming together, aren't we, family? Amen. I got my look. Colin, you're a blessing. All right, it's my grandson. All right. Are you blessed? A couple of points. Church, each of us has a spiritual language. Let's use the language. If you're having problems with a blockage, let's get you freed up. Say amen. And when we are born again, our spiritual language is already inside of us relit. All you have to do is let it out. Amen. All right. Thirdly, this is why we are to ask the Father to help us speak in our tongues. And they began to speak. So you have to speak in faith. Now, how many here ever did some camping? Do you remember those old water things where you pumped the thing and you brought the water out of the well? And some of them were so old, you had to put a little water down the drain first and then you pumped it to kind of prime the pump. That's what speaking in tongues is. You have to step out in faith, prime the pump, and get it going. Once the flow is there, you're connected to heaven. God will turn it into the most beautiful language or languages that you can use. The key is you need to exercise it. Hello? God doesn't fall down you make your, your mouth move and you're a bunch of babbling. No, you have to yield your mouth. You have to yield your speaking. When you do, he'll turn it into a glorious language. Point three, our prayer language is crucial to a believer. Go with me to Acts 19, please. Verse 1 through uh, 6. And, and it happened while Apollos was at Corinth, that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came from Ephesus. And finding some disciples, he said to them, now listen, did you receive the Holy Spirit since you believed? Remember, there were Jews. And they said to them, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, into what then were you baptized? Remember, baptism means to be immersed. In the Old Testament, they were immersed almost daily in a cleansing. They dipped themselves seven times, and they would, and you could see John the Baptist, but it was for cleansing and preparation for what was coming. But now we're in the New Testament. Can you say amen? We get baptized as a dedication to what has already happened. So follow me along here. We have not so much as heard there be any Holy Spirit. And he said to them, what will you baptize? And he said, unto John's baptism. And Paul said, John bat indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, turning from your wicked ways to the right way, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. Verse 5, and when they heard this, we were baptized in the name of the Lord. Which baptism was this? Come on, loud. No. It's being born again. You can't get your tongues unless you're born again. Baptism, first baptism to be saved is born again. They just don't call it always a baptism, but they do call it a baptism. It's baptism into Christ. You're born again. That means you're not yourself anymore. You're a new creature. You have a language that needs to be used. Watch what he says. He says, John's baptism, John says, John baptized with baptism and repentance, that they should believe on him who is to come. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord. They were born again. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, 
What happened? The Holy Spirit came upon them. And they spoke with tongues and prophesied. He got them born again, then he got them spirit filled. Kind of like what happened to me. No space. There was no water baptism in between any of that. Are you with me? God wants us filled every day. Filled, filled, filled. Why? Because you will just rip the devil's kingdom all apart just by being filled. Wonderful. Wonderful. Do you see how it's crucial? Okay. Let's go to the last point and I'll turn you loose. This language generates power to help. Okay? Go with me to Romans chapter 8, verse 26 to 28. Now, I want to say something to you, and hopefully you'll get this. How many has heard all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose? But do you know some people teach that everything is all things? No, it's not talking about everything, because plane uh, crashes and, and train wrecks don't work together for your good. It's talking about the life and the godliness of God works together for your good. Can you say amen? So we're going to read this scripture, and you're going to see how it really functions in the way it's meant to be. Now, I'm not saying God can't get good out of everything. Something crashes, ruins, he can get good out of that. I'm not saying I'm coming against any of that. What I'm saying is that while you are experiencing things, God is in your heart working together for your good. So take your eyes off yourself and off of the world. Put them on what God is doing in your heart because he's working on your behalf for your good every day. And the more you meet with him, the quicker he can do it. All the other things are distractions to pull you away from God. Huh? Your children, this situation to keep you from being faithful and going to church. Going to church is a command of God. It's not a suggestion. So if you're just doing it when you want to, that's where your walk's going to be. It's going to be a doing it want to. And you know, that's what the world sees. Christians like they're doing in the wanting. And they look like a bunch of boobs. Because they don't have it together. They haven't, don't know what they're doing. You go to them and say, huh, is, what are you doing? Oh, I, I don't know. It's right in here. When's the last time you've been in your Bible? When's the last time you've been in prayer? When's the last time you've done what you're supposed to do? Someone say this morning. All right, Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps. Underline the word helps in your Bible. In our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. Ever been in there? You don't know what exactly what this person needs, but you can say, Father, Frank, I place them on your all. I don't know how, what they need. Use my language. And then you say, in Jesus' name, and you speak in tongues over them. Hello. He'll utilize that. They'll get their need met. Can you say amen? And you won't mess it up because you don't know exactly what God's covering. You just know he's covering it. What a marvelous tool to cut Satan's power. Tongues, tongues, speak in tongues. So the Spirit helps our weaknesses, but we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The Greek says, with groanings that are so deep, you don't understand what they're about, but you know they're good. Hello, some of you that have birthing pangs like that, uh, travailing in the spirit where you're feeling the pain, okay? Sometimes some things that can be so awful, it just causes you to groan. That's the spirit working in you. Hello, can you think of any time Jesus groaned in the spirit? Lazarus tomb. What was Jesus doing? He was praying in tongues. Let me ask you, does Jesus pray in tongues? Absolutely. He doesn't pray in unknown tongues because he knows them all. 
but he prays in tongues. At Lazarus' tomb, if you'll remember, let me just say it real quickly. He, he was confronted. Oh, Lazarus, your, your friend, he's dead. And Jesus says, no, Lazarus sleepeth. And so he gets on his journey four days in. His sisters, one at a time, come out and meet him. He says, Jesus, if you would have been here just a little sooner, you would have kept my brother from dying. And, and Jesus says, he's not dead. He's just sleeping. How we want to put curses on people and finish product when we don't know. And it says that Jesus groaned within himself when they said that. He wasn't groaning like you've been told. It was unbelief. He wasn't. He was moving a devil off of Lazarus that took his life. And so he's groaning in the spirit in speaking in tongues. It says he wept. What was he doing? He was interceding in tongues. Now the funny thing about it, you'll say, well, I'll have to know more. Well, good. Read a little bit more and you'll find out when he does pray, he says, Father, I thank you that you have already heard me. See, he already got the victory in praying in tongues over Lazarus. All he said to the people was, roll away the stone. Then he says, Lazarus, come forth. Now, what did Peter do at Dorcas? He got knelt down, prayed, charged up and praying in tongues, and then turned to Dorcas and told, rise, woman. She got up. Are you learning anything? You pray in tongues, you charge your batteries, and then you release. Hello. Satan can't do a thing to stop it. Can't do a thing. He needs you to pay attention to him. And finishing. Thank God he's finishing. All right, everyone say the word helpeth. The Holy Spirit helpeth our weaknesses. Now, it is a Greek word that's one of the longest ones that you can get. It's 13 letters long. And the word helps is tells us that when we pray in tongues, the Holy Spirit takes, now listen, I'm going to define it for you, takes hold with our spirit against our infirmity and gangs up on it and drives it out of our body. So praying in tongues will cause your body to be healthier. Will gang up, God in you will gang up on those areas of weakness. Maybe it's forgetfulness. Maybe it's but some area where you're frustrated in, that you keep falling short in. He will come and he will join with your spirit where God lives and mount up and blow out all your weaknesses. It's a fire that burns up the chaff. So use it to burn up those weaknesses in your area and burn up the chaff from the inside out. Someone say amen. But without doing that, then you're going to battle in the natural spiritual and it won't be as effective because you're not using the tool that God gave us to use for that reason. You see, tongues are for you to use for your infirmities and for the areas you don't know how to pray. Can you say amen? amen. You're, you're lacking in understanding of the word? Pray in tongues. It'll show your mysteries. You're lacking with energy and health? Pray in tongues. It will give you energy and health. I knew of a lady came to my MTC programs where we're ministering training courses. I have three of them, by the way. And as soon as we get more people, maybe we'll teach them again. But she came to one of my classes and she had the flu. She said, I don't know what to do. I'm sick. And maybe I should go home. I said, go into that room right there and pray in tongues until you're all better. I don't know why I said that. I'm taking a bold step. But God spoke out of me and told her to do that. So she was in there about a half an hour. She came out just radiantly lit up. It worked, Pastor. I said, well, of course it worked. The Spirit takes hold with you against everything that's attacking you and pulverizes it. But we never speak in tongue long enough or often enough for that to really happen. You did, lady, and you drove that flu right out of your body. Now, I'm telling you the truth. This is stuff you're not going to get in churches because they haven't got the time to piece it all out there. There's Some of them are so big. 
But you take those special classes and you go in and you find out. Sometimes I'll give out books and things that will help you. I'll send out little notices and clips in your messenger page. Pay attention to what I'm doing. I'm not doing that to giddy and, and to entertain you. No, I'm trying to help. So I try to be like Jesus. When I talk to you, I try to say things that make sense. Now, I do make jokes and I do, I am happy-go-lucky. But how often do you see me making jokes about things that are serious? Not once. And finishing. Have you learned anything? So when you pray in tongues, literally you gain up on your flesh. You got weak eyes, it makes your eyes stronger. If you, if you find yourself tired and, and, and kind of listless all the time, it'll make you fired up. It will literally amplify every weakness that you have and fix it if you'll do it enough. Well, you mean it all at one time? No. Every day, all throughout the day, you can pray in English, pray with your tongues. You can sing in English, sing in your tongues. The idea is to keep the water moving and flowing so that you're growing from the inside out and you're changed. Your children, your family should see that you have changed. Over the last six months, they can see that you've changed your wording, the way you act. Don't try to remain the same. Good old grandma. No, you've changed. You're a child of a living God. Take him in and show him some of the things God has shown you. Can you say amen? So, how many know it's very important now for us to get our language? Have you all got one? Okay. Yes, you do. Have you got it manifest where you speak in tongues anytime you want? Tongues are for a sign to you and to reveal to the unbelievers. They are not to blow people out of the water just because you can speak in tongues. Are you with me? Okay. So if you want your language, ask the Father in Jesus' name. Believe that you received it, and then by faith, start speaking. You have to speak. He's not going to make your mouth move or you speak. And shut your mind down, back it off, and just speak like a little child. Babble to him. Let him turn it into a language. You're kidding me, Pastor Kerry. Well, listen. God takes the foolishness of this world to confound the wise. You notice not many wise, not many noble, not many huppity, huppity puppities has God chosen. But God has chosen us to use and to preach his gospel. If you got something out of that this morning, would you give the Lord a hand clap?